welcome back, Hegan Kogan, analyzing yet another document. Um, so we won't give you much on this one because it'll allow us to ask some questions and point out some things as we go along and you'll kind of get an idea of where we're going through this. So this is how long the document is, starts here, goes on to the next page. So I think, you know, we'll stop at one point and then move on, right? So in, it's 1917, Carrie Chapman Catt, president of the National American Women's Suffrage Association, gave a speech before Congress, and here's the excerpt. So I think before we even start, uh, you read my mind. We got yeah. a lot going on here. Yes. All right. So 1917. Yep. Jumps out of me. World War One. Yep. World War One is being fought. Um, this woman, uh, Miss Catt, is the president of the National American Women's Suffrage Association. Now I know my students. Everybody gets fooled with this. My students better remember what I did to them with yeah. suffrage. Because I polled my students and I say, should we end women's suffrage? And a large majority of my students go, yes, we should. And then realize what suffrage actually means, the right to, to vote. And where are we? We are in Congress. We're at Capitol Hill before Congress, one of the houses of Congress, House of Representatives, the Senate, we don't know yet. Um, why Congress? I don't know. They make laws. Yeah, they probably do. So and It's 1917. We're, we're about like, what, two years away from prohibition. This was uh, an amendment that women wanted pushed. So, and how did they do that? Educating the public, protesting, picketing, you name it. So let's see. It's almost we, like we could predict what she's going to say. Yeah, we're, we're not even there yet. Yeah. Okay, so if, you, so if you comprehend this right up here, we, we just gotta pay attention to what's coming next. Yep. So it is not clear that American history makes women's suffrage inevitable. The full suffrage in 12 states makes it coming in all 48 states inevitable. That the spread of democracy over the world, including votes for the women of many countries, in each case based upon the principles our republic gave to the world, compels action by our nation. It is not clear that the world expects such action and fails it to understand its delay. In the face of these facts, we ask you, Senators and members of the House of Representatives of the United States, is not the immediate enfranchisement of the women of our nation the duty of the hour. So I love what she's doing here. Yep. You know, is it not inevitable? The rest of the world is giving women the right to vote based on the very standards that our country gave to the world, yet our country doesn't allow women the right to vote with the exception of the 14 states that have already done so. 12. 12. I was, looking, I was looking for the number two. So we go. is it not clear that the world expects such actions from us? And why are we failing in this? Why is there so much delay? And why at this point is it only 12, not all 48? Yeah. So when you're looking here at the progress and how people felt about that, that kind of tells you a couple of things. Not everybody was in favor of that. Right. And I don't laugh because I think it's funny. Ha ha. I laugh because I'm like, are you out of your mind? This is stupid. And if um, you looked at the map of the 12 states, they're yeah. Western. And it, 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 it tied in closely to Western expansion. Yep. That the women who moved West became much more independent or, or independent, but almost equal to their man sure. in their survival. And California, why the Wyoming is the first state, California, Oregon, Washington, these were the first states that granted women suffrage on the state level. But now she's like, hey, we've got to make it national. And I'm, gra I'm glad you're bringing up the whole Westwood expansion thing because, you know, when you were moving out west in the late 1800s, that was pretty tough. Yeah. It was all hands on deck to do a lot of things. Yeah. And you had the, the you know, it, women of the house, it wasn't just the children, the cooking and the cleaning. It was, you know, it was also providing first aid, making soap, uh, doing all of those necessary things because you were pretty much, this is almost like an episode of Alone on History Channel or Man vs. Wild. Um, of Naked course, and afraid. Right. Whatever that the case may be, here you go, survive. And, and that's what these people are doing. And women in those particular households, although not fully getting the credit that they completely deserve, you know, they were doing all of these other things. So we have Congress, the Senate. We're definitely getting into the legislative branch for laws and just making sure we're not, we're not missing anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, you bring up really great points. All right, so let's, let's move on. Gentlemen, we hereby petition you our only designated representatives to redress our grievances by the immediate passage of the federal suffrage amendment and to use your influence to secure its ratification in your own state in order that the women of our nation may be endowed with political freedom before the next presidential election and our nation may resume its world leadership and democracy. Women's suffrage is coming. You know it. Will you, honorable senators and members of the House of Representatives, help or hinder it? Okay. 
Now we, you know, we have some evidence here, you know, in order for this to take place, we need an amendment. Mm -hmm. So now we have, you know, repeal, change, amendment, adding on to chaos. what's our rule book, the constitution. So, you know, clearly we don't have an amendment giving women right to vote. Um, this is what the overall goal for them as well. I love her wording here too, mm -hmm. because it, it's almost straight out of the first amendment. Yeah. You know, to petition the government for a redress of grievances, we women, are petitioning you, our representatives, to redress our, to address what our problems, grievances are, our problems are. Our problems are, we don't have the right to vote. Right. You know, we have been second class citizens ever since the document founded our nation where Thomas Jefferson said, all men are created equal. And here's the other thing too, right? You know, she goes, gentlemen, you know, she's, she's speaking to the House and the Senate, gentlemen. At this point, you, you really don't have women in there representing Other than uh, Jeanette know, Rankin. People. Right. Yeah. You really don't have that. And, you know, that, that's, that also speaks to the majority of people who are representing their constituents. It, it's yep. mostly male. I mean, it still is to the, today. But even when you look at if someone were to address Congress or the Senate, yeah. they would begin with ladies and gentlemen. And even ending by saying, like, it's coming. Right. Women's suffrage is coming. What side of history do you want to be on? Exactly. You know, and, and there was a very similar sentiment here when, when same-sex marriage was brought yep. before Congress. It's like, what side of history do you want to be on? Right. Do you want to be known as somebody who's going to move this country forward or keep holding us backwards? You know, since we're talking about gentlemen here, you wonder how conversations went when they got home. Honey, how was your day? What happened? And then you bring this up to your wife. <laughs> And, you know, maybe you're one of these, you know, no backward comment. thinking sexists who are going, isn't that funny, honey? And then having to, you know, answer to your wife along with that. I mean, I'm sure there's documents that play into what kind of pressure maybe mm -hmm. they went through at home. If there are documents or stories even available, because you wouldn't probably want uh, to say what was it's going some, on. It's but a good research assignment. It really is. So when you're looking at these documents, certain, certain documents like this, when you're investigating or researching, you know, you're kind of like looking for it. You know, what were women doing doing in order to get the right to vote? Um, and some evidence we see here giving a speech, um, asking senators and members of the representatives. I think we had petition, as yep. you pointed out before. You know, sometimes when it comes to looking at a document, you're going to be looking at it for a variety of different reasons, as we just, you know, kind of gave you an idea. Um, what, what, you know, the fact that she's addressing this audience as gentlemen says something as well. Um, but these are certain things that we see that are going on that are going to help to get women the right to vote. Um, women were protesting by picketing, marching, getting arrested, um, the hunger strikes. And then finally in 1919, this amendment is passed, giving women the right to vote. And of course, suffrage, don't, Good ever, thing. don't ever make a mistake on this word. Ever again. There are so many YouTube ever, clips ever out again. there of people catching people who don't understand the uh, suffrage definition. We need anything else with this one? Nope. Nope, all right, good. Thanks for watching.